Hey guys, welcome to Piano Rogues. I'm Ari. And I'm Alaire. Today, you might have an idea of what we're talking about. Yep. Ta-da! <laughs> we're going to talk about my ocarinas today. Okay, what's an ocarina? An ocarina is a hollow woodwind instrument, basically a glorified whistle, or an extremely expensive piece of pottery. Although, um, honestly, ocarinas can be made out of all kinds of different things. There are people I've seen in other videos on YouTube who have even made them out of carrots. I was going to say, can they be out of wood? Yes, they can be out of wood. They can be out of carrot. They can be out of pumpkin. So basically, anything that you can hollow out and carve holes into can become an ocarina. In uh, some cultures, they've been used for ceremonial things. These days, people just play them for recreation. There's also a very famous video game which features an ocarina. <laughs> which is where, where most people think they came from. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I didn't even know that ocarinas were a real instrument <laughs> until I saw that I could buy a replica from the video game online. And I was then I was like, wait, what? These are real? So I looked into it more. And I found out that you can get really, really fancy ocarinas. So this is kind of the style. Right. This, this one is a very similar shape to the one from the video game. This is called a sweet potato ocarina because of its shape. <laughs> <laughs> this one is an inline ocarina. We'll um, explain more later. Yeah. This one, well, this one's... This one's unique. We'll talk we'll talk more about that one too. It looks rude, but it sounds pretty. <laughs> Please excuse the shape of this ocarina. <laughs> we promise Lost that's us. not what it's supposed to look like. Lost well, it is what it's supposed to look like, but it's not supposed to look like anything. So, we're going to start and talk about least complicated to most complicated ocarina. Okay. So, least complicated ocarina. I'm actually not very good at playing this one because the one I'm most comfortable on is this one. This was my first ocarina. Tulia here. I name all my ocarinas, don't judge me. I was gonna say. <laughs> safety strap! Safety strap! <laughs> safety strap! <laughs> Tulia has all of the holes in a straight line like this. Which is why? Which is why we call it an inline ocarina. And also the mouthpiece is right here. So I end up blowing straight into the instrument, kind of like a recorder, a little bit like a recorder. The fingerings on this ocarina very closely, but not exactly follow the fingering patterns on this ocarina. But this one is only a single chamber. That means there is only one hollowed out space inside this ocarina and only one mouthpiece. One way place for the air to go. Right. <laughs> So how do you know your ocarina's range? If you have an ocarina and you're not sure what its range is, you can always go to a piano. The lowest note on any ocarina will be in its largest chamber, in this case, this one's only chamber, with all the holes covered. So that should be a, an A. It's a little bit out of tune. And then the highest note on any ocarina will be all the holes uncovered. which is an E. So this ocarina's range is an octave plus a fifth. <laughs> Stop laughing at me, okay? <laughs> this, one, this one has a bit of an issue also where every now and then the mouthpiece gets a little bit clogged on the inside just from condensation. So I have to clear her throat a little bit. <laughs> I feel like I didn't want to be next to you for that. <laughs> It's not, it's not anything <laughs> gross, I promise. It's just condensation because breath is moist. <laughs> so I can play a little something to show you what this one sounds like. I think that I will play Sally Gardens.
Tulia has a softer, more breathy sound, I think, than Aoife, and is um, a little bit more mellow for indoors. Yeah, and we have noticed that she's a little off. Yeah, she tends to be a little bit out of tune sometimes. <laughs> but so, I mean, this one has issues too. So where did you get your ocarina? Uh, this one came from St. Louis Ocarina. And actually, that's also where I got this one. This one was my very first ocarina. This was actually my graduation present when I finished with music school. I specifically asked my parents to get this one for me. It was not long after I had first found out that ocarinas were real, and I decided that I absolutely must have one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd done a lot of research, and I wanted one that had a really large range and could play completely chromatically, which means all the notes. <laughs> all the notes. That means I can play in any key on this ocarina. I could play in D major, I could play in A minor, I can play in B flat major, any key. Theoretically, I can also do the same thing on this one. It's just that Tulia's range is so much smaller. Makes I, it more challenging. Yeah, it makes, it makes the ability to play in other keys a little bit more of a challenge. Aoife is special because this ocarina has three chambers. The largest chamber takes up approximately half of the ocarina. That's this whole area over here. And then the middle chamber, which is right here, that's, that's the mouth hole for the middle chamber. Um, is about, I guess, a quarter <laughs> of the ocarina, and then the smallest chamber is all the way over here, and like the last quarter or so. The largest chamber has the most holes in it, and the lowest note is another A. That was a little bit sharp. I was blowing a little too hard. That's actually one of the things about ocarinas they can be a little bit out of tune, but you can adjust for it depending on how hard or soft you blow. You can't really play loud or soft on an ocarina because blowing harder or softer just adjusts the intonation, not the loudness or softness. So is that different from, say, a flute? Yes, it is. What about a penny whistle? Yeah, penny whistles, you can actually adjust intonation because they have, or at least some of them have, a mouthpiece that sticks onto a metal rod and you can pull that up or down a little bit to make it higher or lower, which fixes intonation. Flutes, you can do the same thing with the headpiece. You can pull it in and out a little bit to adjust intonation. Also, you can roll the headpiece in and out a little bit to adjust intonation on a flute. These, there's, there's nothing. It's just all one piece, and so the only thing you've got is your breath. <laughs> That's all you can do to change it. Aoife has an issue in her middle chamber where the F sharp is just a little bit too sharp. So it's just a little bit too close to the G. And so to adjust for that, every time I have to play an F sharp on this ocarina, I have to try to remember to blow just a little bit softer than I do on the other notes so that it sounds like it's more in tune. <laughs> it's a little tricky. So is an ocarina a good starter instrument for someone? Um, I would certainly say, why not? I mean, people start on recorders in grade school as a starter instrument to expose them to the idea of music making. So I thought I might play a little something on this one as well. Um, so do you have to move between chambers while you're playing? Yes, actually. When you have a multi-chambered ocarina like this one, my triple, to get from one chamber to the next as you're playing, if you've got notes that you need in this chamber over here and then you need the next note to be over here in the middle chamber, you have to move really quick in order to get there. You need more fingers <laughs> to really do it. So I thought I might play a little something on this one as well. Uh, one of my favorite Irish tunes, it's called The Foggy Dew.
for this one. Okay, because of the way the fingers are arranged on this one, there would be a very limited number of notes that I might possibly be able to play with both chambers at once. The way that this one is set up is so that each hand can independently play an entire octave plus a note range with just the one hand. So this chamber, by the way, which is named Donna, has this range. And you can hear how much lower it is than this chamber, Bella. It is because of the difference in their sizes that like, this one sounds so much lower and this one sounds so much higher. The bigger the chamber, the lower the tone that's gonna be produced. If I wanted to, I could have a two octave range. But what really makes Belladonna shine is that she is designed to be played both chambers at once so that I can create harmonies all by myself, which is very fancy for a woodwind instrument. Yeah, one of the problems with this instrument is that if the notes are too close to each other, they create a lot of um, sonic dissonance. dissonance. I think it's resonance. Well, the, I mean, it's... Because it makes it resonate. Like the, the tones are resonating too close together and like the sound waves are fighting. They're kind of doing this <laughs> together. That's how it works. It's yeah, that, that's, that's what's happening. <laughs> this is what this it's doing to this. <laughs> sound waves are fighting. <laughs> and another, another issue that this ocarina has is that the octaves themselves are not perfectly in tune. Like, so if I play two Cs, for example, get ready. <laughs> Whew. That's muscles. supposed to be an octave apart. It is not. <laughs> I think, yeah, it's this chamber. This one's just a little bit too sharp. And because I am blowing into both chambers at once, unfortunately, I can't adjust my breath for just one chamber and not the other one. So I can't change the intonation on this one. I have a question. <laughs> uh -oh. I wonder if you could use your tongue to partially cover or... <laughs> <laughs> well, now that might just be overcomplicating things a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> okay, what do you know? It actually kind of worked, but I still think that might be overcomplicating things just a little. Yeah. I, for, for the most part, I just avoid creating those harmonies when I'm trying to design something to play on this ocarina. So do you have something to play? I do. And again, I am sorry, this is the ocarina that I am least familiar with, but um, that's because the fingerings on these chambers are so different from the other two ocarinas that I'm more used to. Before we play, where did this one come from? So this one came from Songbird Ocarina. Um, so different family than these two. Yeah. It might be mentioned that it is because of my mom <laughs> that I have these ocarinas. So on this ocarina, I am going to play a song called Lavender's Blue, which is an English folk song. Had to stop for just a moment and think about it. Wait a minute, <laughs> which, like, wait, which, note, which note am I gonna play on which chamber? <laughs> So if you were at all intrigued by these ocarinas, which I hope you were, um, I would certainly hope that you would be inspired to look into getting one for yourself. They are very fun to play. They come in all different shapes and sizes, many and more. Colors. That too, and colors, many more than you see here. Not only that, but they come in various materials too. These are extremely expensive pieces of pottery but you can also get them in plastic if you want something that's a lot more durable and just for learning the basics on. So we are going to be um, using the ocarinas a lot more in the channel now. In Twitch, we're gonna be practicing and playing more. Mm -hmm. And then also we're going to have more episodes which feature ocarina. So please like and subscribe to our YouTube. Thanks for letting us steal your screens for a while. Stay, Stay rogue. rogue.